Okay, this build has got me fired up because this is the time of year when I start catching smallmouth in my rivers and streams on top water. Um, what I want to build is a is a prop bait. Um, Scott, a um, buddy of mine, we used to have uh, smack tackle together. Um, he and I were down in Dale Hollow and we met this guy who was a lure collector and he turned us on to this bait called a Burns bait. And uh, we had actually, it was funny, now he didn't turn us on to it. He actually said, I bet you don't know what this is. He had all these collector baits. Scott looked at him and said, that's Burns bait. <laughs> he said, how'd you know that? No one knows what that is. Well, we had met some guys on Lake Cherokee one time in Tennessee who were bass fishermen who had pulled one of them out and said, man, you ever fish with a Burns bait? Um, it's just basically a wooden bait that had a prop on the front of it and a little f metal fin tail on the back to stabilize it. And uh, they talked about how great it was. Well, I come across them in aluminum blades, not the, the, the one that stabilizes, but the actual props. So I bought some of those and I thought, well, I want to do more like a chub minnow, a little bit longer bait, a little bit narrower. I'm just going to put the prop at the tail and then I'm going to rip it. If you ever watch some guys fish for peacock bass, they, they rip them chopper baits, them, them prop baits. So it's basically a prop bait, um, but uh, I got some confidence. I think we're going to catch some smallmouth with it. Um, so watch the build. I'll end up, as soon as I get it finished, I'll take it down the river and we'll see what we can do. Okay, I've got this uh, old poplar spindle that I've cut the end off. And what we're going to do is we're going to shape that rascal into a uh, plopper style of bait. First thing I need to do is finish cutting that off. I'm figuring the overall length should be right around there. Okay, I'm starting with the semi-round head, and you know, flopper baits, um, you know, you're pulling them through the water on the surface, and if you try to make a fish profile, you end up, um, the lure wants to kick on its side. I played with this before. So that's why whopper ploppers are so round. You know, uh, if you choose a species like a chub minna, they're a rounder fish. You, choose a shad or a shiner, they're a thinner fish. So if you're modeling um, a fish to do a whopper plopper out of, I recommend a round, you know, like a sucker minnow or a chub, <coughs> maybe even a sculpin, something that has a more tube shaped body. Okay, now it's gonna wanna be teardrop shaped. So we're gonna come back, taper this back section quite a bit. Some dark poplar right there. Poplars are really good wood to work with because it's dense, but it's still it's not too dense. It's not like oak where it's so difficult to carve. You can still carve it, whittle it, sand it, um, but it's it's strong and dense and uh, has some weight for casting and and uh, durability for holding hook eyes and things like that. Add a little more light to the subject. So I like um, carving, you know, I'm, I'm going to do something simple like this. I like carving the shape and then I study it and I say, well, you know, it has just a little bit more of a belly here, so that'll become my bottom. And uh, usually it works out pretty good that way because uh, 
if I were trying to carve it, that subtle difference would be kind of painstaking. But since I've already carved it and I'm not exactly symmetrical, I have kind of a, a section that would make a, you know, a better belly. So I'm going to call this right in here the belly. So if I were to put a center mark, the nose, one at the tail, and then connect the two. Okay, so I'm going to want my belly hook probably about right here. So I'm going to want to start my bend right about there. All right, let's let that dry. Okay, so the glue set up. Um, just need to fill this, other remaining sections, seal it. We should probably go ahead and cut our details in before we seal it. So um, come back about five eighths of an inch, maybe. Uh, this will be where the head starts. We got the belly line, of course. Now we might as well do the back line. That's a little better. We got some pretty big eyes in there. So let's uh, let's cut these gill plates out. Let's go ahead and carve some, or uh, dremel some eye sockets. Okay. Right, before I fill this, I'm going to add a little more gill detail. I'm going to break that gill right like that.
Got some really cool eyes the other day. I kind of looking down. I like it. Oh yeah. Just a touch more red there at that gill to feather it out a little bit. Stick on him. <laughs> uh, okay. Right, one more clear coat. Okay. So I'm gonna go to Kroger and get some plants put in here so it looks like you can pump the water pump. Are you getting anything? <laughs> it seems a little dry. Pump up some test water so we can test the lure. You don't remember the purple fernies or Frangles. Anyway, when they get bigger they, they have those little wheat things that stick out of it. Okay. Hmm. I got some Interesting. Okay, nice. You're not doing mulch this year, are you? Well, I guess they won't be going fishing with me. Oh yeah. First hit. Okay. A little bitty guy. Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> Little toots. Where's the big girls at? Where's your great grandma? Come on. There, there's great grandma. Oh. 
That was great grandma. <laughs> oh gosh. Man. Check my hook. Oh well. Till next time.